All right, well, welcome everybody. My name is Craig Blanchett, uh, otherwise known as Blanche, and it's my pleasure to um, uh, introduce you to, this is our Off-Road Hand Cycling Adventures, um, and it is our, one of our workshops, and this is the 34th edition of the National Wheelchair Sports Camp, and this is our first ever virtual camp. Uh, we've teamed up with people all around the country, all around the world, actually, um, and uh, so we're here to bring you our second of our Saturday workshops. This one's Off-Road Hand Cycling Adventures. And um, it's my pleasure actually um, to introduce our, um, our my uh, co-host. Um, his name is um, Bill Lasher. And Bill and I met each other um, probably about two years ago. And we were in, I uh, came out to... Um, Las Vegas to be part of a uh, three or four day adventure. And I got to meet Bill. I got to ride some of these off-road hand cycles. There's a picture of one in the background there. And um, uh, just kind of fell in love with the technology and realized that it really got me off the road and out into the woods. And if you are somebody that uses a wheelchair or some type of adaptive equipment, pretty much flat grounds ground that's flat works well um, ground that's muddy or snowy or sandy or up or downhill or lots of rocks those are tend to be things that don't work as well for folks that are on wheels and so when I got introduced to the off-road hand cycling I realized that there was an adventure just waiting to to be had and with this uh, hand cycles you can go places that I had never been before um, under human power. Um, I've done some off-road four-wheeling and stuff, but all of those things had a motor. And so um, met Bill. We worked out a deal. I ended up uh, being a uh, in partnership with him. And so I'm, I ride for, for Team Lasher, and that's, um, that's been fun. But Bill, let me just give you a little details about Bill. Um, uh, in this workshop, you will learn about the adventure sport called off-road hand cycling. Uh, uh, we will take you on a tour of the advanced adaptive equipment that takes us off-road to explore the backwoods and trails out in nature. You'll learn how the equipment works and how you can, ri how you can ride and about e-assist as well. And so Bill is uh, the actual um, designer, the owner of Lasher Sports he created this company back in 2004 to uh, pioneering the sport of off-road hand cycling so that we have access uh, to adaptive equipment that takes us in uh, on lots of adventures. So welcome, Bill Lasher. Let's see here. Let me unmute you. There uh, we go. Perfect. Are we unmuted? Do you hear me? Oh, unmuted. You are live. Good to see you. Hey there. So give us a, tell us a little bit about uh, your shop there and tell us a little bit about your background and how you developed these, this technology. Oh, background. Different this time. You want background. Yeah, a little bit. A little um, back you want me to start like, with the Michener version where first the earth cooled or a little more recently than that? A little more recent than that. Thank you for that, though. <laughs> um, well, actually, I used to be a school teacher. Um, and taught for a number of years, but I went to college for engineering and architecture for a while until I decided that probably wasn't what I wanted to do with my entire life. Um, so as I was, as I was teaching, um, I, always, I always wanted to design stuff, build stuff. Even in college, I was messing, and this was in, in the late 80s, I was messing around with carbon fiber and I had a carbon fiber chair I had designed. Um, and after several years of teaching, I guess it was about 12 years of teaching, I decided, you know, I'm going to build a, a chair because uh, I want a new one and I don't like anything on the market. So um, I taught myself how to weld and fabricate and everything and I built my first chair. Um, and that was 2004. And then since then, you know, it kind of turned into a business. It wasn't supposed to be a business. I was just doing something for me. But then people liked stuff and it kind of grew and, um, you know, we're, we're where we are today. Um, with with the hand cycle, the, the portion that we're talking about here, um, that came from doing uh, road racing. Um, and this was, yeah, I guess about 14 years ago now. And 
when you road race, you have to be on kind of pretty perfect pavement. Um, and as I would bike along, little trails would shoot off into the woods, and I always wondered where it went. So I created um, the first off-road hand cycle, which was just for me, so I could explore into the woods. Uh, and that was something that people were interested in. So we then came out with that as an actual product. Um, and that was basically the first specific design recumbent off-road hand cycle. Um, and so from there, biking off-road um, and doing more and more off-road, it started to get pretty bumpy and rough. And that's where the suspension came in. And that's kind of our flagship model now is the ATH FS, FS stands for full suspension, where we have a shock at each wheel. Um, and, you know, we just, we keep building on the platform and, you know, power has been a really huge thing lately and bigger wheels, bigger tires, more capable. So every year, you know, we're building a, a better and better bike. So that's kind of where, that's the, the nutshell background since I couldn't give the Michener version. Um, and we're here at the Lasher Sport shop, which I'll um, kind of tour you around a couple of different places in a little bit. Excellent. When Craig says, when Craig mean, says so. Yeah, yeah, when we do that. I have a, um, a couple little videos uh, that I've uh, pure procured. And um, this uh, workshop is going to be a little bit better than the last one because the videos are going to work. But I've got some videos of us uh, of that uh, were taken. Some of these were in Moab, Utah. Uh, uh, so you'll be able to see some of these off-road, the off-road hand cycles actually in, um, uh, in their native environment. So we'll hopefully this will... This is going to play for us. Really? There's a little blind shrimp in there. Is that coming through all right? Better video? Yep. This is Moab, Utah, and this rock is called um, sandstone, or they call it slick rock as well. And when it's dry, it's literally like rock that's been infused with sandpaper. And so rubber, when it touches it, loves it. There's, It's like Velcro. And so this it, this angle doesn't look super steep, but that thing was like a wall to climb up. And uh, you should so, point out that you have no motor there; that you are the motor. I I am the motor. Be the motor. Yep, that's true. Um, this is a um, let's see, new share. Here is another video there. Uh, and what what um, Bill was talking about is they have these, and he'll show you some design, uh, some of the uh, working bikes that have the E assist, and they are pretty awesome as well. Wow! That's, that's You're heard somebody say "Wow" there because that looked like that was going to be that was about uh, 16 inches, um, a, a, basically a little ledge. And uh, of course, the lasher uh, went up it with with no uh, without concern. And then this is a um, uh, a really fun shot here. Let's see here. New share. This is a slow mo shot, and I know you'll love this one, Bill. I know this one looks familiar to you. So that this is one of Bill's amazing machines that does actually have um, this has a motor on it, and if you see um, right behind, right in front of my chest, there's a little um, round black box, and that round black box is the actual motor, and then it puts it puts power into the chain, and so I was flying down this trail. Um, under power and then you tap the rear brakes and slide the back end around and it is loads of fun <laughs> i'd like to point out that that's pretty impressive that you're sliding the back end like that also because those are some pretty aggressive tires on the back end they they want a grip and you're breaking traction so that means you're going pretty fast on that yeah they're meant not to slide and <laughs> i right. was like no we need to slide today yeah. <laughs> so those are a couple shots there. I was going to show a couple shots from uh, Wheelchair Sports Camp as well. 
And um, we brought um, uh, a team, a couple hand cycles out last year to wheelchair sports camp. And so we had a couple different designs, a couple of lashers and one of the reactive adventure designs. There's, there's a number of designs out there. Um, this is, of course, our, our, um, our good friend, Bob Bardwell. It was his first time on one of these uh, vehicles, and he uh, absolutely loved it. Uh, this is, was Anthony Rigoli. This is a little video. Let's see if this. Uh, we were setting up the obstacle course. Building so some obstacle course here for the Lasher obst Sport Obstacle Challenge. And uh, this was out kind of fun up last year. Got Bob coming with something fun to go over. So there was that, and there's Anthony. This is actually um, Rob. Uh, Rob on actually my hand cycle going through the obstacle course last year. That that photo is is just rich and fantastic. And then this was after we got out in the mud and uh, had a little fun with Anthony and myself out there in the mud. And this is uh, out in my back patio, uh, backyard kind of area. So anyway, there's a, just a couple shots of, of some things for uh, off-road hand cycling. And um, do you guys, uh, let's see here, I'll look for some other photos, but why don't you uh, take us on a little tour of the Lasher factory and you guys can see some of you were on the video from before or the last workshop and so, uh, it's going to be similar things we're going to show this time and maybe a few new things, but you can obviously ask questions. If you do have a question and you raise your hand, then I'll know that you have a question and I can unmute you. But back to you, uh, Bill. All right. I'm moving through the office area here. Let me switch to not me. There we go. Let's do something new because we're doing this a second time here. This is kind of our, our bike area over here. Um, this is our, um, I guess just bike stand. It's a regular bike stand, but um, a fork is being built on a particular bike right here. Um, so this is where kind of all that kind of stuff happens. And so this that one's got the motor on it. Maybe that would be a good angle to show people how the, kind of how the motor assembly is hooked right up. You it's also terrible. told me I early on. Better, I think on the other one. Oh, will it? Uh, yeah, this is, I, I can do it better on the other one. This bike, by the way, is going to Germany next week. Nice. Um, we're getting a pretty big, big European base. That's, that's one of the, I don't know if you can see that very well. Yeah. I can see it very well, but that's, um, that is a jig uh, fixture to hold um, the fork parts. So you then, told me once before um, that they have hub centered uh, or um, powered hubs, and then you've moved your your off road hand cycles to the um, the mid drives. I don't know what they're called, but tell us a little bit about kind of the the ideas of where you put the motor and why you put it where you put it. Yeah, the um, hub drives were kind of how everything started, and they're they're it's not that they're bad. It's that they don't really handle the abuse so much of um, of being off being off road because they're they're taking all the pounding of everything you're hitting because they're in the wheel. The nice thing about the mid mount motor is it's driving the chain, and you know as you crank and the motor is kicking in some assist, it's all driving the chain. And whenever you hit things, it's suspended within your frame. Um, and it just it helps protect protect the motor. Mm -hmm. Excellent. This this here is um, a hand cycle that is in production right now. The majority of the welding's done. He has just a couple more things to do. This is the rear suspension where that's going to tie into. Um, and then coming forward here, it's the front front part of it. Front part of the the head tube. That's this what the tube. front fork hooks into is through that front tube. Yep. yep. This head tube here is um, solid. It's machined out of a solid piece of magnesium. And it's got our um, 
fork lock technology machined straight into it. This was a crazy expensive piece, but it makes a better bike, so that's why it exists. And um, so you use magnesium for the frame. That's that's unusual. Tell us a little bit about why you why you go with magnesium and is it lighter or heavier or what's the benefit? Let me come around here to some of our metal we have stored here. Um, this side here is all magnesium. And the reason that we use magnesium is it's a third lighter than aluminum. Uh, those aero tubes, and let me grab a, a piece of aero tube down here. Bring you down with me. This is the tube that we make the frame out of. And this tube right here uh, is solid magnesium. Now, as you can imagine, uh, a magnesium tube is not something you go to the store and buy. So we have this pressed for us at the foundry, made specifically for us. Now, finding tube shapes can be really, really hard. And even round tubes, getting the exact size you want can be difficult. So instead of having them press for us, say, aluminum tube in that shape, the magnesium tube is just as strong, but it's a third lighter than aluminum. So that's, that's where this piece comes from. And we have it shipped over to us. Um, as you can imagine, it's not cheap, but it makes a really nice frame. Mm -hmm. uh, I see down here they've done some bending on Friday. Just one second, I'm going to put you down so I can grab one of these pieces. So you guys are able to bend, bend magnesium? That's unusual. Well, it is, um, and it took us a long time to figure it out. So this is, this is one of the main rails that goes with, I'm trying to put it far enough away so you can see it better. One of the main rails that goes with um, the off-road bike, and we bend this whole thing in-house. And if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to break in half, and it's not going to bend, and it's going to be a disaster, and it costs you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So um, we know what we're doing, so it, it doesn't, doesn't break. Let me come over here. Here is one of the bikes. We put them in tubs when they're done, getting ready to go off to powder coat. And then over here, we have a lot of the bikes being assembled. So there's our front fork on this particular bike. I don't know where this one's going. Point um, to the, um, the shift mechanism before you go to the shock. On the there's a little on in line on the cable that shuts off the motor. Oh, um, this that's is something uh, I haven't seen on very many other bikes. It's fascinating. He let's see, did they have that? That's over on the other side. Yeah, I can see it right under there. Yep, over here. That's this this little guy right here. And what happens is. When you shift, it momentarily shuts the motor off so it's not putting a strain on your chain or any of your other parts while it's shifting. Um, and that will save your chain and save damage and all kinds of stuff. So it just momentarily, a second or so, shuts off while, while the shifter is shifting and then it comes back in again. And so basically what that looks like, guys, is these bikes have a thumb throttle. And so you can sit there and hold the thumb throttle down and then you can shift the gears. And while you shift with keeping the gas on, uh, the motor shuts off and turns back on, letting the system shift uh, flawlessly. And it's, uh, and these, these, I've had one of your bikes up to 30 miles an hour on, on the pavement under power. So pretty fancy. My, my fastest in one of these is 45 miles an hour on oh. pavement without a motor going down a hill on a line of traffic. Just I wanted to see if I could. Oh, funny. Okay, good, good. But don't, don't do that. That's probably not smart. Yeah. Um, so this is the motor. It kind of sits right here in line with the crank. There's your, your seat and everything. So your motor sits right up here. It, it, it's not in the way of anything. Um, and then it connects right to the, the chain ring and the throttle means that it will go just by throttle. Um, you don't have to pedal or anything, it'll just go. We have it special made for us so it starts from zero. A lot of the ones that have throttles, and honestly there aren't very many anymore, but a lot of the ones that have throttles um, wouldn't start until like two miles an hour. But for us, it's kind of handy to be able to go right away because if we're stuck 
it's nice to have that instant torque instead of trying to use whatever we have to try to get going. So that's kind of a nice feature that we have. We have five boost, boost assist. You can see all the different wires coming off of here. They have to finish up. Um, has five boost assists. The battery sits right behind, right back in there, right behind the seat. So we keep the battery low and out of the way. Um, and then if we swing around here, these big three inch wheels on the back, this, this is what you were spinning out on in your video earlier. <laughs> and then you've got a big plate up top. Can you see that? Yeah. And that is a um, for mounting a backpack. And there's also uh, a rack option we have. Um, and then this here, can you see this one? Your video's paused for a second. Where is my video? Can there we go. Okay. This is a 3.8 inch tire on here. Which is a monster. It's a monster. It is. Hold on. I'll oh, and you got the um, the Archer components shift mechanism Let me, on there. Look at you. There, there's my hand on it. So it's like. And how I'm, tall are you? I'm 6'6". Six, six. I have pretty big hands. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's, a, it's a big tire. Um, this one has electronic shifting through this Archer component right here. Uh, electronic wireless. For, uh, wireless, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then this is the shifting knobs on this particular one right there, the buttons. Um, and then there's your another view of your rear suspension back there. And he's got the Fox DPX2 float shocks. It's, it's, whoops, I'm missing them. There we go. It's a, a really high end, really nice shock. This is it's an FS3 shot. model. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very nice. Uh, so this is the FS3 model. So it's our high-end model. And then it comes in two-tone if you prefer two-tone. This is a gold and blue one. We've got a gray and orange one that I was showing you previously. When I say orange, we have 6,500 colors to choose from. So orange um, could be any of hundreds of different oranges. And I have no clue what orange that is. Yeah. I'd have to look it up. It's a pretty orange. Yeah, it's it's... You know, that's one of my favorite things is that we don't just offer like black or red or, you know, some generic color. You have 6,500 colors to choose from and your, your bike might be the only one that's that color ever. Hmm. Or it might be if you post it and people are like, hey, that's awesome. You might have a whole lot of copiers. Yeah. And you've got disc, uh, hydraulic disc brakes around on each, all three wheels. Yes. Yes. We have high, the hydraulic disc brakes on them. Um, and what else do we have? Shimano. We use uh, a lot of Shimano stuff. My hand's in there. Use a lot of Shimano stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, they're just, they're just super capable bikes. And, you know, a lot of times we get people asking us, oh, well, it's front wheel drive. It probably doesn't climb very well. Um, but interestingly, with these really big tires now, uh, they climb very, very well. And, mm -hmm. I mean, there's unless it's like straight up the side of a mountain that might be a little difficult but if you're just riding with your mountain biker friends on the trails that they're on usually almost always you can get up what they can get up unless there's some extreme kind of mountain biker another yeah, we, nice thing about having the two rear wheels behind you and not in front of you is that when you are climbing um with two wheels behind you it gives you a much more stable platform if you get off camber a little bit uh, with one wheel behind you, if you get off camber a little bit, you can actually tip over backwards into the side and kind of roll backwards down a hill. Like, not roll, roll on the wheels, but roll on your body. Yeah, it's and uncomfortable. That's less desirable. Yeah. So, Sebastian, you had a question. Let's have a couple questions here. I know you have your hand up, so unmute yourself. There you go. Um, yeah, my question is, so how big is your, the place you work at and do you have like a lot of employees? We have eight right now. Okay. I honestly, I'm seeing that keyboard in the background. I feel like maybe you should be playing something for us. 
Yeah. No, I'm not. I play the violin. Okay. Oh. I'm not a pianist. <laughs> okay. Well, that should be an episode then, because we we should hear your music at some point. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, we have about eight eight people working here. Um, it's been a little bit hard, honestly. The whole the most difficult thing we've had with the COVID. A um, couple difficult things we had. One is with childcare. It made it really hard for people to come in and work because we were we were open to work, but they didn't have any place to put their children. So. That made it kind of difficult. And the other difficult thing, which is kind of interesting, is uh, bicycles became very popular because people, since they couldn't go places, they would just get bicycles and they'd go work out, you know, wherever they could go biking, I guess, legally isn't the term, but allowed, it wasn't frowned upon. So the bike industry has gone wild. So trying to find um, bike techs that could work with us I mean, right now we've got guys that are coming in at 6 a.m. working before their other jobs um, because all the bike techs are so busy. Um, so how big is it, like, the building size? Is it, like, small or is it, like, uh, a factory type? Yeah, we're, we're – this is the showroom that we're in right now. I came over to the showroom. Um, overall – what size are we overall? 5,000 square feet, I think. You'd think I know because I have to pay, pay the rent every month and it's pretty expensive. Um, interesting side note, um, the new um, Raiders football stadium that they built, I can see from here, it, it's, it's like a half mile away. How much would one of the bikes cost? Like if you just wanted to buy one? Um, that's a good question. Uh, we, have, we offer a few different models. Let me turn this around and I'll show you. Um, so the one on the left here is an ATH. It actually has its road tires on right now. Um, but this is our non-suspension version. And I think this one starts at $59.95. It's online. I can't remember fully, honestly. This one is our beach model here. Um, we have lots of different tire sizes. This tire is a, a 36 inch. And last time I wasn't able to really show you the difference. But if you look at these two tires side by side, this is a standard wheelchair size tire. This is a 36 inch wheel. <laughs> it's, I know it's kind of stupid, but I can't help it. It's just, like, I look up to that wheel. I just want to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then if we come, if we come over here and we look at, this is an older model um, FS right here. These start at $99.95 or $10,000. Um, and they can get expensive if you're adding motors and everything. Um, but what I mentioned, uh, before is if you go to lashersport.com, then to the ATHFS portion of the website, the hand, the bikes, and the ATHFS, there are there's a funding category where it lists a lot of different nonprofits that provide funding, and I mean you, you there's various amounts that you can get. Cali Brush generally would do about five thousand. I've seen them do more. Um, you can combine different funding sources. And we've had people that pick up these hand cycles um, through just pure funding, just pure funding sources. There's another hand cycle that's in process. Yeah, um, Wes, you had a question. Uh, let me unmute you. There you go, loud and clear. So, so where do you find a good trail? Like, do you, do you, are there some trails where you get on it and then you're all of a sudden in an area where you can't get out of is so I guess because you kind of said just go where your off-road uh, biker friends are going so pretty much any bike trail um I wouldn't say any bike trail because there are definitely different levels of of bike trail um for I know around here we're in mountains it's kind of rocky and um some of the bike trails I know get to a point that everything might be accessible and then you get to a point where the trail is about four inches wide, a mountain bike can barely fit through and it's a drop off on one side. And I'm just not even gonna attempt that because I know it's not gonna work. So a lot of times if I'm doing some sort of a recon, I'll ask a mountain biker, hey, what's this trail like up here? 
is this going to be the sort of thing that I can do? Some things, you know, say you're in a wooded area and two trees are really narrow together. Um, depending on the area, you might be able to just go around those two trees. And it's, it's really no big deal. But a lot of it is just um, riding trails with buddies. Um, you know, most people don't ride by themselves anyway. So there's a good chance you're going to be with somebody that can assist you if it turns out that the trail is way harder than you thought or um, there's some impassable section. But for the most part, I'd say 80%, maybe more of trails are completely doable. And the rear wheels, it doesn't matter where your rear wheels are, honestly. Um, they kind of do their own little thing off to the side of a single track. Um, and with the shocks on there, if a rock happens to be there, assuming it's not like a giant boulder, but if there's, say there's like a six inch rock on the side of the road, it'll just go over that, no big deal. Yeah, that's one Hi. thing that I've noticed um, as I've been riding it, when there's, there's a two primary designs of off-road hand cycles. And uh, one of them has a one wheel in front, that's the Lasher Sport models, very similar to a road bike, a road hand cycle, it's just with suspension a little higher up. Um, and Sitting a little more upright, too. A little more upright, yep. And then the other model has two wheels in front and one wheel in the back. And one of the, they both have their advantages, and they, there's a different style to them, and, and there's positives. The one thing that I've noticed when I'm going down a trail at speed and it gets really narrow, on, my, on the Lasher, the narrowest part of the bike is the front wheel. So I can get the front wheel through, the frame through, and if it gets narrow for the rear tires, usually the, the suspension just rolls over whatever it is because I have momentum. With the other bikes, with the two wheels in front, when you, you can't just bomb into, with the front wheels, bomb into a really narrow area or you'll just stop, <laughs> right? Cause it's the first thing that hits. So they usually slow way down and they kind of rock crawl over it. And it's just, a, it's just a different feel. And, and so, and the other, the other benefit of the, that I like from the Lasher um, and I've ridden this the most is the center of gravity is lower. And so um, if the bike starts to tip uh, you can, you can touch the ground fairly easily and the, the reactive ones, your center of gravity is higher and you have a different vantage point, but it, the tippiness happens differently. You have farther to go before you touch the ground. So you know, we, we, changes. we have customers that have both, Craig. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the way it was described to me by one of my customers, um, they said that they use our hand cycle, our off-road hand cycle, when they want to go biking with their friends. And they use their, that kneeler style hand cycle when they want to go hiking with their friends. Oh, that's a good term. Yeah. Um, because those, those tend to be geared a little lower um, with that one wheel in the back. You know, sometimes it can be a little bit better at, at climbing, um, assuming you're not off, off axis or anything. So um, what, that, what that allows you to do is, you know, it's, I guess it's a good hiking machine, um, but it isn't terribly fast on a flat. Um, and it isn't terribly fast up a hill, whereas ours are more in line with what a mountain bike is to be, I mean, you can go real fast on a flat if you want. Um, and it, you know, it's funny, it doesn't seem fast, but if you talk about going 16 miles an hour through a wooded narrow section, that feels like you're doing 50 miles an hour on a road. It just feels so fast. It comes at yeah. you so fast. Yeah. And speaking of going fast, uh, I'm going to show a video here. This is at um, the 2019 Off-Road Hand Cycling World Championships. Um, they had um, two days of racing. They had three events per day. Uh, the, this was the, the middle event. The first event was a downhill race. The second event was an obstacle course. And um, just to give you some background, uh, in this particular obstacle course, which we had set up, they, um, there was a guy that was at the event that had never been beaten in nine years. He, he, he was the master of the obstacle course, and the guy's brilliant. Um, his name's Pat, um, Pat Dowdy. 
And um, he's the he's, inventor of the free wheel, by the way. He invented the free wheel. Yeah. The guy's really, really smart guy. And he does a, has a fine bike. And um, this was my first event. So I was just basically go as fast as I can. That was my strategy. Go as fast as I can. And so you'll see a little bit about how um, we had, um, uh, I handed my phone to my spotter and basically said, can you film my race? And she's like, fine. And so this is what and that Craig, like. on the line in five, four, three, two, one, go. Those logs are about eight inches tall, and the bike just gobbled them up. This was a pretty massive Light work. Oh, yeah. thing. People got hung up on that and were flipping over on that thing all day long. Yeah, come on, you got this. Yeah. 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 The ladies are laughing at me because she's yeah. funny. There you go, there you go. There you go. There you go. This was a teeter totter section here. Oh no, that's. Jason! Yeah! Oh, yeah. yeah. So they had spotters there because a lot of people got right stuck right on up. those things. And, teeter totter, and right off it. Just went right there. Here goes the teeter totter. And then right here, I had the choice to go left or right. I chose to go stop, which I had to go right. I should have just gone straight up it. The biggest challenge for my bike is when you get when you get super steep. If it gets slippery, I have a hard time with traction. And so we were able to have them come up and push down on the front end. And so she was adding a little bit of traction uh, to the front end, which was neat uh, for everybody to have. And then once we got past that little section there, uh, I was able to. The turning radius on this bike is really good, so I was able to turn on a dime and now we're going through some more obstacles here they commented later that i flattened all their obstacles they were like what did you do with our obstacles so we got one more obstacle here And so the, um, my finishing time was a minute and 10 seconds and second place, second place was two minutes and 10 seconds. So it was, um, it was about a, it was a minute. They, they all just, well, I, I didn't know what to expect. I was just trying to go as fast as I could, but that was some of the, um, the skill and the talent, uh, the, the capability of the bike just allows, uh, allowed it to just gobble up all those all those bumps and just kind of go right over them. Craig, I'd like to also point out, you know, in the one area where, one issue when you watch videos, you can never really tell how steep anything is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that one area where you, you had the help, there were lots of different areas where they had help, but you just didn't need it. Um, right. One issue that you personally have with trying to climb is you don't have the weight of legs up front to um, add more weight to the front wheel. Right. So that, that's a disadvantage you have in climbing. And I know we made you um, some weights to act as heavy things on the front wheel to give you a little more grip. Yep. Here's one last little video here. Uh, this was at the end of the run at Crested Butte in a jump. And so this was uh, going off a jump there. Oh, my the gosh. <laughs> Wow. We'll do that again. Of course we will. How much weight? Nice. That felt pretty high. That felt about 20, 20 times higher than that, <laughs> than it actually looked. How much weight do you add for each leg to, to accommodate somebody like Craig? Like, do they say weight, legs weigh 25 pounds a piece or 30 pounds a piece or what? Um, no, we don't. We don't necessarily do it like that because there is a disadvantage then of having the weight on front because then the fork isn't as responsive. Craig's fork is much more responsive because he doesn't have leg weight on it but he has a more difficult time 
climbing some of the steeper sections. Um, some of that actually, if you were to have um, a motor, he doesn't have a motor on his, if you were to have a motor, as you're coming up to something that might be a quick steep section, you just use the throttle gun it a little bit, get up to speed so you just pop right up and over something and then keep going. Um, but I think with Craig's, I think each, each ballast was about 10 pounds. Does that yeah, sound right, Craig? We do eight to 10 per side, yep. Yeah. And you, and you notice positive and negative with that on there, right? Yeah, it was really slow. I, I didn't like how slow, how slow it responded, so I ended up not running it. Um, I'll show you guys. Um, here's one little video um, of somebody on one of the other, on the other reactive adventures hey! coming through this section here. I can't, I can't believe how fast you went over. Well, yeah, so, <laughs> so this is that, just that one little section here. Got it. Stop. Yeah, got it. Whoa, 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 whoa. And then oh, of course, the center yeah, of gravity is really high. He ended up down. Yeah, over. Can I get a help, I guess? Yeah. And every time they give you help, it adds five seconds. This is great Can footage. Over something? Thanks, Danable, for getting us this awesome Can you footage. That one up? I think it'd be easier if we came yeah. back. Oh, wait. Let me just roll. There you go. Yeah, Doc. You be two or brother. Uh, yeah. like and, like and that's got the front suspension and the rear suspension <laughs> both. <laughs> Craig, I want to point out like a big difference, yeah, dog, and you can that. see it right there between ours and theirs. He has to, he can either steer or he can crank, but he can't do both at the same time. So you see one hand is off cranking, one hand is, is holding the steering. Now, yes, your chest can steer for you at slower speed. the rubber speed, side down. But not at, at faster speeds. With, with our bikes, the way the recumbent works, um, when you're sitting in your bike, you can crank, brake, shift, steer, do it all without having to remove your hands. Yep. Yeah. So there's, and that's the, everything is, you never take your hands off of the places. Everything is just right here. And, and, and I haven't rode the other bike on a lot. Yeah. I suppose you get used to whatever you're doing, but I did notice that, um, um, here's another, another view of, um, off-roading. This is a guy, very skilled guy. This guy came in second. His name's David Cooley. Push, come on, dig, dig, dig. And so it's just, it's a little different, different technique and different style. And, um, like, like what you said, Bill, is when I want to go hiking with my friends, I would take that bike. When I go to go biking with mountain biking with my friends, I would use the lasher. And that's, I think that's, um, it makes sense that that's, that's good. I'll show you one more thing here, just as we're finishing up a little jump. Um, uh, well. Craig likes to be in the air. Yeah, it's fun. This is just a fun little, um, thing with scout here um and this is what i take her out on the road and <laughs> So there's that one there, and then there was one more that I wanted to show you here up where I live that's um it's a fun little section here. Here it is. Well, actually, here's another one too that I didn't show before, but this oh, that explains, yeah. This shows you how the um bike goes when it's um uh the bike hauler, and this is how you can um uh, load it up and carry it outside your car, which when you have a, 
a mountain bike, it's not a bad idea to to um, to keep it outside your car. So you get the front wheel in, and you strap it down, and then. Uh, isn't it funny how you want to slide that thing through and the only place it doesn't fit was where the valve stem is and it just happened to be exactly where that seems to be i know yep. and so you, you stick the front tire on and then basically you just have a little crank and uh you just Crank it up on there, and then it slides down in these little um, little cubby holes, and you so lock cool. it in. And then I'm mm -hmm. able to. You have it on a Kuat pivot too. Yeah, it's it's a little pivot, so it it allows me to open the back door to my car, and so then yeah, I just push a button, and the whole thing slides right back up um, behind my uh, the car. I was trying to find. Let me do that one jump here. Uh, there it is. Is that a lasher that that bike mount? Is that something that Bill makes? Yes. Yep. Yeah, we we designed it and and we make it. It's um again since I design things because I have things that I want to do. Um, that was so I could move these things around too because you know that's that's always a concern. How do you move such a big piece of equipment around? So that was the design I came up with, and it, it can. There, there's an option that you can carry two mountain bikes with it as well. Yep. So it's it's great. The other thing too is the thing weighs about 40 pounds. It's all made of aluminum. And so I can literally move it around. And anyway, so here's a little jump. Um, that only caught about 18 inches of, of air but it feels like a mountain <laughs> when you're going off that thing. <laughs> so anyway, I, want, I want you to tabletop the whole thing and land down, down yeah. way. Ramsey, looks like you had a question here. Uh, let me unmute you. All right, Ramsey. Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Um, so, uh, my, uh, uh, I uh, have cerebral palsy. Okay. And limited use of my hands. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm grateful for everything I have. What type of bike are you less likely to fall off of? Probably. probably. Is there a bike that you're less likely to fall off of? Yeah, that's a so what I the question was you have cerebral palsy and you have limited use of your hands, and so you're looking for a bike that you would be less likely to fall off of. And um the the bike is one thing, the places you ride it, I think, have a a lot. Um if you're going on flat trails that are off road, but like a, a dirt trail, a hiking trail, things like that. There's, there's virtually, if it's flat, there's no way you're going to tip over. Um, it's when you, when you start going on things that are side sloped, that's when there's a chance of, of things tipping over. Um, and, uh, so it really, um, for someone that has limited use of their hands, having a bike that has motor assist, um, does allow you, you know, if you don't have good range of motion and you can just pedal a little bit, you might just choose to have the motor assist. So then you could, um, use that, but it might be the, the type of a thing where, um, I mean, off-roading is the most extreme. They have certain types of off-road wheelchairs and um, Bill even sells a uh, an off-road wheelchair that has bigger tires that might be something more, and there's off-road um, or more capable power chairs that go off-road. And so some of those things uh, might be something to consider as well. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. I'm not asking for myself because I, 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 I won't do this, but I do a lot of advocacy work for okay. people that might. So. Yeah. So for other people, for advocacy, thanks for the clarification. Um, I think that the lasher is less, I'm certain that it's less tippy because it's lower center of gravity and you're sitting down in between the wheels rather than up on top of them. And uh, every time I've ridden with people on the other bike, um, the one challenge they have is they do tip over more from what I've seen, what I've experienced. So... Yeah, um, I got one more um, quick little video here, and then we're going to finish up. This is uh, when I flew up to um, uh, to Crested Butte for the national, the world championships. Um, I take the bike apart because I put it into a box and fly on a plane. And this is the um, a stop motion or a fast, uh, what do you call it? Time time lapse. Time -lapse. That's what it's called. Time lapse video of me putting the bike together. So, so we're putting the front fork on here, getting the suspension dialed in. Front wheel goes on, brakes go on. Then we're working with the rear disc brakes. You have to put all the brakes on and then mount the wheel on and then put the caliper on. And then um, hooking up the chain and the drivetrain, the seat belts, the water, and then I oiled my chain. Then I put on my little, on the very front, those little round things were the extra weight. And so that was, that was the fast frame time lapse of putting the bike together. So. Is that uh, um, like uh, engine, what kind of? fuel would you put in the engine? Is it electric or is it gasoline? Electric. Yeah, it's electric. I thought you were just calling me a machine and I was going to tell you what I ate. Well, you you are the engine. Craig is the engine of his because he doesn't have a motor. But all of our motors, um, we offer two different sizes, a 750 watt and a 1,000 watt. And most people go with 1,000 watt. It is a completely different motor than the 750. Um, and most people will go with that thousand watt just because having that larger motor with more windings gives you more torque and power out of it, especially when you're driving those bigger 3.8 inch wheels. It's a lot of extra rubber on there. Um, but the thousand watt motor does well. Um, I think it, the peak output is like 1600 watts um, of the thousand watt motor. And yeah, it's just, it's just battery power. We have a 840 watt hour battery that we pair with it. And depending on how much throttle you use or how much assist or even the kind of terrain, um, you can get, I mean, you, some folks have gotten up to 50 kilometers with light assist on, on more of a flat kind of terrain. Um, if you're going up straight the side of a mountain, you might only get 10K out of it. So it really depends on your usage on how much um, battery power you need uh, some people will also carry a second battery with them if they know they're doing something that's going to be battery taxing. Excellent. All right, guys. Well, thank you, Bill, for the for this tour of Lasher and this uh, really ad off road adventures. Um, if you guys are there's there's grants and things available. There's um, you know Challenge Athletes F uh, Foundation and Kelly Brush Foundation. Both of those guys offer grants for things. Um, and, uh, off-road, off-road has been fantastic. I've, I've loved being able to get outdoors. It was the first time I technically, I went hiking with my son was being on one of these and we were able to go and do things that I just never did before with him. And so, um, taking this thing, backpacking, going out and camping and stuff like that, it's absolutely, um, does it well. So thank you so much for building, not only the presentation, but building, this um these this technology for all of us to that we have access to um if we didn't have it we just couldn't go do it so thanks again for your time today bill and uh thank, well, thank you, you very much thank you yeah. everyone for for coming too and for the questions yep so our next um